Hi, I'm David Stitzel from Germany and I'm going to make a few video tutorials about the vibraband, one of my favorite amazing instruments invented by Stan Wood. And as that's the question I get asked most, I will first make one about building an instrument, about how to get a vibraband. And uh, there's good and a bad news. Uh, the bad news is the actual uh, real questions are about how to play it. It, will, it won't play if you have a great rival band. It's really hard and tricky and interesting to figure out how to play it. And the making and getting is kind of easy. It still took me many, many years. Um, and after tr lots of trial and error, uh, because I didn't know how much was the instrument and how much was the playing and what kind of secrets perhaps I, I would have needed. Now I can give you many of these things uh, and you will be much faster and easier with learning to play it. But So it took me a lot of time and only after that I found people that actually knew Stan Wood and told me what he used. What I've used here now is a piece of a gymnastics rubber band. It's not so important actually, ah, the good and the bad news. The bad news is it's hard to play even if you have a good one. The good news, you can play many things. It has to be rubber and it has to have some kind of dimensions that are about right. But it's actually not as important how wide it is. It's good if it's the same width all the time and it doesn't change and something this is kind of small. I actually have different, uh, different ones, and I've started out with other things. And um, gymnastics rubber is not what Stan used, but that's not so important. Actually, it's more about the kind of um, dimensions and the, the thickness and the um, stretchability, the elasticity. So Stan somewhere stated he started out with postal rubber and so some people believe that's what you need but that's what he said he started out 35 years before the video was made and from there he went to um, dental rubber from there he went to surgical rubber and he also changed the thickness they became thicker and thicker which doesn't mean you need a thick one for the beginning because actually um, they are harder to play so thinner ones are maybe like this is thinner than this it's also gymnastics and they are uh, they are easier to play i have another one uh, just ah on the floor um it's even thinner I would need some time to adjust, they all play fine. Though the thinner ones, they kind of overdrive at some point. So this goes louder without that distortion thing going on and it sounds a little lower and more kind of standy, but it's much harder to play. At first when I cut this I thought it was impossible to play this and I wanted, to, I, I just left it there because you never know because I had cut it. But I started out with other things, so my first thing were c cut from, from balloons actually. It's better to have a little bigger ones because they are thicker and then cut a piece like that. But if you have such a balloon you can even play. It's now, I would need 15 minutes to adjust then it would play fine like this is hard but just to show in principle that it's possible. Good that I didn't cut it because it's actually too too thin and two layers are thicker and because Stan also talked about something like that with his postal rubber that there were two layers and they had to cut it and that was kind of one of his breakthroughs that's something different because it was a like a loop and then if you play like this and um, you have two 
um, things that can move independently and hit each other and that uh, spoils the thing. But if you have two layers here and you press the air out in between so that there's kind of a vacuum holding them together so that they don't move independent. It's actually fine to, you, you can practice on this, it, it will work. You can even play these, um, these are uh, balloon twisters where you make the, the dogs and swords, swords. Um, you have to press out the air. And now it's very hard to play this for me. But that is mainly because the width of the strip that I'm using is like, um, it's not just half, but it's like, um, a third or a quarter and that's very hard to adjust but it's possible it's also interesting so you need something that stays the same width actually but it's not uh, totally true because some people have said that that it has to have a special width that the width is important that that makes total sense because if it stays the same then you can kind of they're very, very fine little things and you can get used to one width and if you change it you get confused and you have to kind of start over but it's not true that it has to have a special width to work which is one part of the good news because you can use many different things actually so start with a balloon and use use just the, um, this part that is kind of same width and same thickness almost and without air if there's air in between um, it's also possible but it's harder like if I if I use this and don't press the air out then I have two sheets that are not not uh, con together but I, if I play this for 10 minutes or 15 minutes I can even play it with air in between and with much too small so to get one is actually easy. If you want to cut one, in the end, it, it is better with a cut one. And it's also good to have different thicknesses and a thinner one to start and uh, perhaps thicker ones to, to get to. Those are my, my thickest I have here. I think I even have a few in between, but I haven't cut them yet. I, I'll just show you the gymnastics the things they are cut from and they come in different thicknesses and colors and like this is the thinnest it's too, too thin actually for me and even though the thickness is not all I think it's also it's the elasticity which also depends on the material itself if I try to measure that it's like a little smaller than um, um, a millimeter it's a point seven or something and the thinnest one I have here um, is well, this is point 0.5 maybe it's thinner it also it's hard to measure with uh, something like that because it depends on how much you press yeah, it's point 0.5 I think this is thinner actually it might even change a little over um, the whole thing because I thought I had a thinner one. Yes, this is point four. Um, so uh, one hard thing when you cut them is how to cut uh, rubber because it will always um, it will bend or change and it's very hard to even cut a straight line and if you kind of if you put it on a on a board and put something hard metal or something on top and press and then cut along um, you should get a straight line but usually the rubber still kind of bends a little and then it goes and makes something so you need really sharp blades Stan used razor blades I used just a sharp knife which was not sharp enough actually and then there's um, the Ken Butler, who was a friend of Stan, or is, yeah, and who
who played Stan's uh, vibra bands and who is one of those people who told me what Stan actually used and also the dimensions which I can put in the description underneath. Um, you should check Ken Butler out anyway because of his own inventions and instrument building and playing great things, also playing together with Stan. And he's a vibraband player and maker and he cuts vibrabands with a paper cutter between sheet, two sheets of paper. And that's uh, the best met method I think. But I have not, I've only tried it once with a paper cutter that didn't do it. So it depends how, on how sharp the knife is of the cutter and also there's something usually holding down the paper. And if it's close to the paper, to the cutting uh, line, it's good. If it's further away, it doesn't matter with paper, but with rubber, it will stretch then in between and it will not cut a straight line. So if you have a paper cutter that does the job, that's perhaps the best um, way you can go. So I'm, I will uh, put more videos about the playing, which is the much harder and also more interesting part and um, I don't want to, um, um, it's a wonderful instrument. It's not as hard as, um, as it f feels in the beginning. It will, uh, it will uh, feel impossible. Um, and actually, if I, I can tell you a few things that took me many years to figure out and you will be at least much faster than without those. And it's such a amazing instrument. It uh, would be a pity if it would die out. And now there are only a very few um, player players around the world that play a little bit. And so I hope I'm I'm doing this just for fun and for you and for free. And so if you have anything that you want to give back to me or to the world, please feel free to give. Uh, put your comments, questions, whatever, likes, um, give me money, um, or your own experiences and uh, discoveries, um, perhaps underneath in the comments or wherever. And I am going to make more of these videos, and so then I hope that we will get a new community of Vibraband players and that we can perhaps put this to I, I think this has a actually this instrument has a lot of potential that is um, now the, the point is that the, the only player who got very very far has unfortunately died Stan Wood and so to get there is one uh, real point and the other thing if the more people um, play this instrument, I think it, it still has uh, potential, um, great potential actually. Not only that it's funny, that it's small, that it's cheap, that you can carry it everywhere, that it's loud, it's really loud without amplifier. Um, uh, it has so many and can really sound great, though it um, doesn't always do that. So I hope you like that. Become a player.